Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Christian Hannah Hoare here, and today, guys, I want to do my retrospective of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Now, if you've watched my channel for a while, you've noticed that my retrospectives really tell the story of my love for the film and how it became that way. I'm not going to tell you the plot. It's 2020. If you haven't seen Freddy's Revenge, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But here's the deal. This is a special movie for me, and I'm going to tell you why, and I'm just going to go ahead and get into this. So take this ride with me. It's 2009. I'm a senior in high school. I remember um, my brother was like, hey, let's take a trip to Spirit Halloween. And we were going to go to Spirit Halloween. And I just was, you know, at the time, I, I was into things that me and my friends were into. I was into, like, hardcore rock bands like Throwdown and Bury Your Dead. And uh, I was, uh, you know, really into UFC at the time. Uh, I've, I've been a Brock Lesnar fan for most of my life, so when he that was right at the height of him joining UFC, we were hardcore into UFC, hardcore into uh, thrash metal, and, and and you know hardcore post hardcore metal and all that stuff. And um, uh, I never really was a big movie fanatic. I would just watch movies regularly. We'd go see Hangover at the theater with my friends, but I never became a fanatic of anything like horror movies until this moment. So we take a trip to Spirit Halloween, just me and my brother, and I had a great time. And I was looking at all these characters. I saw these animatronic Frankensteins, and uh, I saw animatronic uh, Freddy Kruegers and Hellraisers. And, you know, heavy metal and horror, like, they, they, they seem the same almost. They seem like they've got the same kind of blood flowing through them. So I really was like, I opened my eyes to this world, and I really got the bug for it. And at the time, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 was coming out in theaters. And I had seen the first one in the theaters. And uh, ha Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 was coming out in the theaters. So I was like, I've kind of got the horror bug right now. I want to I experience some horror. So my mom used to work right next to a blockbuster. So one day, I uh, got home from school early. I called my mom. I was like, hey, Mom, can you do me a favor? She's like, yeah, what? I said, can you run by a Blockbuster, and can you rent uh, the Freddy Krueger Nightmare on Elm Street movie? And she's like, sure, I'll, I'll rent that for you. That sounds fun. So she comes home, and this was like fate. This is like such a special thing. She comes home, she says, well, they didn't have the first one. Somebody was renting that, but they had the second one. Uh, so I just got that, and I was like, okay, I guess I can just watch the second one. I had never seen... Uh, a full Nightmare on Elm Street movie, like, in its entirety. As a little kid, I remember seeing little shots of Freddy's Dead coming on sci-fi, but I had never seen, like, a full movie. So I remember it was a Thursday night, because I remember it was the next day I had a, I had a football game and everything, because I was in marching band, I was a drumliner, and I remember I get the movie, and it's like 9 o'clock, the house is quiet, everybody's going to sleep. I put on Freddy's Revenge. Now, this was before we had these. You know, in 2009, people were still using phones that kind of slid up, and you had to type, and you had to really work to send a text because it was three letters to a button. You had to press it fast and then wait for it to space. Those that are old enough know what I'm talking about. And I watched this movie, and I really got lost in it from the opening because the music in Part 2 was so creepy, and I just remember being mesmerized by this film. And this was the literal birth of my love for horror. Because I had grown up seeing horror movies. But Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, I'll never forget that being my first Nightmare on Elm Street and watching it and taking this ride with this character of Jesse and just being like, this this guy's like really nervous about something. Something doesn't feel right. And then seeing my first glimpse of Freddy on that school bus terrified me. I was like, oh my God. Like I was really taken aback. And uh, I just remember being more scared by that movie than, like, seeing Rob Zombie's Halloween at the time or, or The Strangers because those movies scared me. Like, because, you know, I was never really huge into horror, so I wasn't ex exposed to much. But I remember when I watched Nightmare Part 2, I was really, like, creeped out because that Freddy is terrifying. And the scene where I just remember watching the scene where uh, Jesse runs into Grady's bedroom at night and when he gets ready to burst out of him, it mortified me. Uh, my literal face was... I remember Grady, uh, or Robert Russell, talked about when he saw the movie in the theater, he goes, when we get to that scene in the movie, you know, the whole movie's got people yelling and screaming. Well, when we got to the scene in the movie where Freddy bursts out of Jesse, it shocked people, and they, 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 they couldn't say anything. Like, they, they, it, was dead as a, it was dead silent in the theater because it literally shocked people. That's literally what happened to me. I just watched it like this, and I was like, holy smokes. So I finished the movie, 
I remember going to school the next day, telling all my friends about it. It was like, oh my God, like I watched Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 last night. It was terrifying. So I remember I brought some friends over to watch it and they were like, oh God, that was scary. And it was the literal, that from that day, from that day forward, I don't think I ever went a week without watching a horror film, ever. And that was 2009. I have watched, I, I, I'm i serious, I think I have watched at least one horror film for once a week from that time because it it birthed everything. It birthed my love for the genre. It is a special movie to me. And I'll never forget the way I used to watch that movie. Pure innocence. And like, I, I never, you know, because I've been, I've been on YouTube for almost 10 years now and... You know, when you get to a certain point, when you become a fan of a genre and you really start to dive into movies, you start to see things with less of like a virgin eye and uh, even new things that you haven't seen before. You, you, you start to criti- criti- be able to criticize and uh, constructively, I mean, and, and look at movies more, um, not philosophically, but you can look at movies more uh, constructively and you can like you, you see things that aren't right about this or that or production things. I miss the innocence of how I watch that movie, and I try to make sure I keep that innocence when I watch something. What I'm getting at is this. When you watch Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 now, a lot of us that have watched the movie, you see the problems. You see that, you know, some of the shots of this and some of the editing of that, and it's not the well most well-produced film in the series. Quite frankly, it's probably one of the the worst edited in story and in, in stuff like that. You know, it's very criticized in one way, but... I love that film with a passion and it's still the scariest to me and I'll I just miss that pure innocence of how I watch that film and you know like for instance when when Jesse's reading the uh, the diary you can clearly see there's not even any writing in the diary and they're they're saying the lines in their head you know but when I was watching the movie back then I was just so in awe of the film I didn't even notice it you know what I mean like that's that's what I'm talking about I always try to keep that I never try to go into a movie and be like, okay, I'm going to watch this, but I'm going to make sure this, all this stuff makes sense to me and the story's perfect and the characters make perfect sense and each scene is a completely perfect flow. I don't want to watch movies like that, and I don't think I review movies like that. My reviews whenever I talk about movies is how the movie made me feel. I don't typically talk about, well, this scene didn't make any sense because how did this happen next? That's just not my style. That's not how I do th- it's not how I do things. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 will always be such a special movie to me. It birthed my love for horror. Once I saw that movie, I remember I rented I, when I rented it, I watched it like four or five times before I brought it back, and then I subsequently watched Nightmare 1, then I got 3, 4. I rented them all, and then I, have, I bought them all after that, after I rented them. But Nightmare Part 2 will always have this extremely special place in my heart because of how much it means to me and, and that that experience. I'll take it to my grave. The experience of that being my first Nightmare on Elm Street movie, the experience of that being my... Th- that that day. I'll never forget it. It was, it was a Thursday in October. I wish I remembered the date. It was a Thursday in October, and it birthed my love. From that point on, I became obsessed with horror movies. And I, I, the next year, I watched so many horror movies and gained a love for so many films. Uh, I knew so many actors in one year's time because I, I just went on this extreme binge and watched everything from Puppet Master. Well, I'd seen Puppet Master when I was a kid, but from Reanimator to uh, just you name it. You name it. Um, and I'm still, I'm still loving that I'm finding films from those eras and, and beyond now. Um, but that movie is so special to me, and it's got a special place in my heart. It, it, when I think of Nightmare Part Two, I go back to, I instantly go back to the memory of me being in high school, 2009, and falling in love with that film. It's, it, it almost brings a tear to my. Eye. So that's my story with Nightmare Part Two. That's my retrospective. It, you know, it's so. It, it's 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 just perfect to me. I love it. I love it because it gave me my love for horror. It truly did. Um, who knows what would happen if I would have watched another movie after that? Maybe I would have. Maybe what if what if I would have watched uh, like uh, another Nightmare on the Street part movie and it didn't give me that same effect and it didn't it make me obsessed to watch the rest? I could not be here right now. Like you think about that. Those moments in life. It's very special. So I ask you, what is the movie that birthed your love for horror? 
What is the movie that birthed your love for horror? I want to know in the comment section below. I appreciate you listening to my story about Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Uh, thank you guys for watching this. I love each and every one of you guys. We'll see you next time.